Good morning, Steve. How are you? Fantastic, Dan. Good to see you. I was using my FM DJ voice there. I thought that was your uh, <laughs> Catacombs and Comedians DM voice. <laughs> no, I get. I try to sound cool when I DM, and um, but you know, I end up sounding like a nerd, like most, you know, <laughs> nervous dungeon masters in front of a live audience. Is um, it stressful? Sometimes it is. It's it's become less stressful. We were just. I I just had a show Thursday night in Huntsville. <clears throat> And uh, let's get introductions out of the way. I'm Dan Taylor. I am Dungeon Master of apparently a live action Dungeons and Dragons show at comedy clubs, as well as this month and next month, and probably the month after that, I'm a comic book creator. We'll talk more about that as well. Um, but I do a show, Catacombs and Comedians, and um, and uh, that's that. Steve, what do you do? I write and draw web comics by and large. I write a, a draw web comic called The Middle Age, available at middleagecomic.com. It's on Webtoons, Tapas, and Go Comics. And then I also do TTRPG stuff like Intoxomancy and the upcoming Death Dealer. All right. Introductions all the way. Let's get back to the show. So, yeah, Thursday, um, did a show, Huntsville, Alabama, at the Stand Up Live. And, um, we were talking about after the show and the comics were saying how much more comfortable I am on stage now and how the shows go better and everything. Cause one of the comics was at the very first one I did in Nashville, uh, Kanan Witcher. And now he's doing, he's, you know, he's comes down to Huntsville and does it with us there too. And he was like, yeah, from there, from then and now it's like, you know, night and day. Um, um so Apparently, I'm getting my sea legs, so to speak, when it comes to the comedy stage. That's and, great. Uh, it was a great show. In fact, I've been very lax in getting, you know, because I get audio recordings of most of the shows, and I try to, and I started out putting them out as podcasts, and I've been very lax at putting them out there. But I was working on Thursday's show just before we went on live here. Um, so I will post that up, and you can find it at catacombsandcomedians.com and all the various podcasts. Um, whatever they're called nowadays, I don't know, uh, <laughs> providers, agitators or whatever. So, yeah, so I'm going to get back in there. I'm going to go back and I've got all these little flash drives all over my desk of various episodes and we'll try to get, get them up. So they're not going to be in order, but you know, the episodes, the shows themselves pretty much aren't in order anymore. I tried initially when catacombs and comedians began, I'm like, okay, let's do this all over reaching arc of stories, like a mcu type of thing where everything gotcha. binds him but you know it's hard enough to just to corral four comedians to play D, &D let alone have them remember what's been going on from the month before two months before from the last time we played so now they're just basically one shots and you know yeah. sometimes i even use the same adventure for another town because it's different comics so yeah so you know, there's no rhyme or reason anymore. It's just it's a lot more fun, it's, and it's a, and it's less stressful for me to try to ring it all in, you know, wrap it all up and keep it neat because the comics will do whatever they possibly can to fuck with my mojo and not <laughs> let me do that. So, uh, <laughs> so this last episode was very fun. Um, again, I'll post it up probably this afternoon, and it'll be available. And it's got music cues and the crowd was into it and wow. it's yeah it's it was a good a good time was had by all um, how do you handle the music cues i just tell the sound guy and i just go cue music <laughs> oh, i was a trip you had like a small soundboard or an app or something like that you know it's it's i couldn't eventually maybe hopefully i'll get to that point but i'm just so hard keeping track of what i'm doing right on stage yeah. that you know i just said I'm when I want music, I'm just going to say cue music. Excellent. Um, and it's a great sound guy down in, in um, Huntsville at stand up live. So he's, he's on the ball. We overplayed the music. It's just one, it's just one running gag. Um, but it worked out really well. The crowd was, I mean, there was a point where the crowd is just waving along. You can't see it cause there's no video of it, but everybody was into it. Um, it was a good time. It was a really good time. I felt really comfortable about it. And I was going to ask about you know, like any uh, standout fan interactions or standout moments from the the latest episode, latest event. Well, the last time I was in Huntsville is when I premiered the um, Fez of Dungeon Mastering or the Fez of DMing, 
And some, a uh, couple gals in the audience were rather impressed with it. And they said they were going to buy their Dungeon Master one. Um, they weren't that impressed with it, Steve. I'm not <laughs> going there. It's not a penthouse forum letter. Um, there I, I was. Hello to I, old, I, old creeps. I was DMing a Dungeons and Dragons when I, the last thing I expected, these two women came up to me noticing my holding my fez. Noticing my fez. Um, but they ended up biting their DM a fez. It's very similar to mine. And he came to the show last night or Thursday night. And um, so there are jokes about it on the podcast you'll hear about. But I told him before the show that uh, once I put my fez on, he must remove his fez. For it. There's only one DM fez in the building allowed at a time. <laughs> that's amazing that's amazing um but yeah it was it's you know it was, it was last night or i keep saying last night but thursday night was one of those shows where i'm so glad i'm doing what i'm doing and i had so much fun doing it um and so now i can't I, my next show is in knoxville at central cinema it's an old little artsy movie house and i've done one there before but they were so impressed with it that I will be there every last Wednesday of the month from June through October. So I have residency now. Wow. Wow. So I know that you, we talked about this because you, you are, um, uh, uh, you have, you have muses and they, you have, you have a variety of muses and they pull you in many directions. Yes, I do. It's, it's like a, it's like a Coachella. <laughs> of muses. And so I keep thinking that, the uh catacomb comedians is core because it's such a huge hit do you feel like when moments like that happen like you're like you leave that show and you're like i'm all in i'm a hundred percent catacombs and comedians and the second you get back to your desk you're like there's also the map i have yeah and like, <laughs> you know it's kind of actually after after a show especially a really good show when i get in the car to drive home um you know i've gotten my check from the club uh, it's never a huge amount, but you know, it pays for gas and, um, you paid to play D and D. Yeah. Um, but that's when I'm at my most relief going, oh, okay, I don't have to worry about a show. I can work on another project now until I got a panic for oh, the next that's show. Cool. <laughs> Amazing. And I have found with catacombs and comedians, originally I would spend months planning a show that doesn't work that way. The best shows have been the shows where I'm like, all right, I got Catacombs of Comedian show in two days. I better pull something together. And it you're sounds Simon. You're, you're Simon from D &D, from the D and D movie, right? <laughs> and it's just, it because you have to. Yeah, it just and it works better. I mean, because I will sit at my desk for hours, going, "All right, let's see what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do?" It's not coming to me. It's not coming to me. And it's usually, you know, the day before the show. At my day job, I'm like, oh, I got it. That's what I'm going to do. And then I wish I can get out of my day job to work out uh, work on it. But I got to wait till I get home. And then I'm, you know, then it's like, oh no, is there a family thing tonight? Do I got to put Jean Louise to bed? Is it, you know, because I probably have to do it tonight because I won't be home for, to do it tomorrow night because I'll be at the show. And so, but it's I, I'm it's really really fun that again Hunts and Huntsville is a great really. Good morning. Um, Rayleigh's coming over to my house Wednesday to help me with the, my uh, 3D printer. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so I got to clean the garage today. All right. I got tomorrow off. It's a holiday. I'll clean the garage tomorrow. Um, so, yeah. So that's what makes... That's the whole thing with Catacombs and Comedians. It's been... Like I even told people on stage, I said, look, because it was one... Wednesday, last Wednesday was the one year anniversary of my first appearance on stage for Catacombs of Comedians. So it's been going on for a year and nothing I've done. Like you said, I have many muses and nothing I've done creatively has lasted a solid year. Right. And and, and you fought it. You have, you have, you have, you've been in that path for Catacombs of Comedians, but I know I can tell every time we're on, they're like, but there's also. Yeah. There's, there's, you, 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 it's, they're tugging on you the whole time and you're kind of like, barreling ahead it's so awesome i mean i've got 4d20 i'm still working on i've got you know we're going to talk about tales of the valiant uh, the project i want to do for that and you know and again i mentioned i got a new comic book that we're going to crowd fund um but there was yeah. also the other there was like a, a possible western there's a kids project yeah there's a, yeah there's a map 
that hasn't doesn't have a home just yet. Oh, it has a. Oh, that's that's going to be for the Valiant project. Okay, good, good. I want to talk yeah. about that too. I'm trying to I'm too. trying to combine a couple of these things, you know, try to reel them in and get them, you know. So try. I'm trying to get some of my muses together to form a super group. <laughs> A temple of the dog <laughs> and to put it's out a one hit, you know, be a one hit wonder. And I'll be fine with that. Um, so, yeah, so Catacombs of Comedians is great. I encourage if you're in the Nashville area, the Huntsville area, or the Knoxville area to please come see a show. Um, it's fantastic, fun time, at least for me as Dungeon Master. And I was on fire. I mean, sometimes I'll cheat on a roll. To first to make the story, you know, better or make the stage show better. But I was rolling 20s left and right, uh, kicking ass. I mean, I even I I got to the point where I was just ignoring some of the 20s I was rolling because I couldn't I didn't want to kill my players. That's so funny. <laughs> but yeah, it was a it was a super fantastic time. Um, so how's your live show going? <laughs> uh, call this live. Um, it's it's Good. I've been uh, cranking on the Middle Age and on Death Dealing, and I finished a huge. I just finished an illustration that has been kicking my butt for the better part of two months. I keep it was one of those ones where it was like I was fighting it. There's a there's a giant house monster. It's because this Death Dealing is all about rogues and it's a gambling motif, and so the idea was the house always wins. That line res, you know. Oh, so I'll make the monster the house just for the purpose of the dad joke. The house always wins as kind of the flavor text underneath the name of the creature, and it's just so it's just as huge creature that's a animated sentient building um a lot of strength a lot of hit points not much more to it than that but it needed a nice piece of artwork and so i started sculpting it and i started sculpting it to scale with all the other minis i sculpt so it's my first time sculpting terrain it's animated terrain it's all too much work and it was kicking my butt and kicking the butt of my ipad which i do all my sculpting on um, so the good news about it is the through the process of trying to wrangle this thing, I made a lot of concessions. Like, let's just make it look good for the illustration. No one has to 3D print a shoe box, you know, a huge thing, which most I, I, larger than the probably larger than the reservoir of resin or the you know the huge PLA printer cabinet. Um, we're, that's future Steve's problem. I just need to make it look good for an illustration. And so I got the reference, even if it doesn't, you know, you turn it around, there's, it's got a false back. Yes. The feet aren't finished. The parts you can't see are like duct tape and scaffolding. So, but from the camera angle for the reference I needed, perfect. Mm -hmm. And so uh, future Steve, if I ever have to try to fight that thing, maybe the software will get better. Um, but I, I, I worked on that yesterday. I think I finished that illustration. So, the card artwork is done. The illustrate that house illustration is done. The other monsters, I think, I think I've got three or four other magic items I need to render, like sculpt and then paint. I, calling it painting feels weird because it's all digital, but um, it's going well. I think, I think it's going well. Um, so, still the hope is to have the PDF out this month. So I've got a few days and get it to everybody for. <laughs> for beta. That's what I do. I send it out to everyone, and then they kick the tires and they'll say, "Hey." you neglected to include a DC for the spell attack or something like that. they'll catch something I've screwed up and then I'll re-release a finished version. And that's what will get sent to the printer. So that's my life is all about that part. Of it. And, the, and the, the comic part is easy because the, the, you know, that script is, is now well in hand. It's just the, the, the every time. Oh, and I totally redid my cover. Did I tell you, we talked about the blood, right? Yeah. I pulled all that blood out. And now it's all electrical effects. I'm really happy with how it is. It's much cooler and uh, more magical and less grisly. So, yeah. So I feel pretty good. All right. Well, that's good. Okay. See you next week. No. Um, yeah. So, and I, I, I think I rag, I rang, wrangled you into doing a cover, a variant cover for my new comic, right? You did. I have been wrangled. Okay, um, so has Steve Musgrave, who does a lot of my D&D art for Catacombs of Comedians. He is working on a adult cover. <laughs> well, you'll make money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and in fact, it's done. I have it in hand. It looks, it's, it's great. And, um, and then EJ Sue, who does Transformers. 
Okay. He's doing a cover for Star for Star Marshals, and I think I got Darren M. A. Calvert on board. Are, they, are, you, are you bringing the band back together from your days as editor? Just EJ. Or, yeah, yeah, he's the only one I'm, I'm bringing back. Um, but no, I mean, EJ is great. He, you know, we're friends and I can always say, hey, EJ, you want to do the project? In fact, he was on board to be the artist for the book at one point, but it, things didn't work out. So he may just be doing it out of guilt, um, which is fine. Um, I think that's how I got you too. And, uh, um, but I'll, I'll play the guilt card whenever I can to get my way. Uh, <laughs> so we changed our channel, this, this channel to self-deprecation and dragons. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Star Marshals um, with the tagline is cleaning up the galaxies one perp at a time um, is my sci-fi buddy cop comic book. It's going to be 40 pages of story, eight pages of bonus material. And uh, it's going to be run on Zoop as opposed to Kickstarter. Um, I'm a f Zoop is officially taking it on. We're it's on board. It's on their uh, calendar. We're going to launch end of June, so it'll wrap up about a week after Comic Con. Wow! Because cool. I didn't want it to wrap up during Comic Con or anything like that. It makes sense. And um, yeah, all the, all the art and story you you've I've sent you the story and all the to me the story you've seen it all and it's done so it's, it's not done. one of those it's not one of those kickstarter or crowdfunding projects where oh, okay i'll get the money and then i'll start on it and all oh, fingers crossed it actually ever you know everybody actually ever gets it it's the pdfs can go you know as soon as i finish adding the eight pages of back of uh back material which is more or less just wanted posters of some villains and you know maybe a schematic of their ship stuff like that. So it's all in various stages already. So, you know, as soon as the money clears, I mean, people who ordered, who just got the PDF or have the PDF with their, you know, uh, rewards done. There you go. That's awesome. And I can just, yeah, <laughs> next muse. That's awesome. <laughs> and, I'm, so and, and I'm going to have all somebody else handle the printing and, um, and handle the, uh, the distribution of it so who are you yeah so that's i will i won't have any physical i will not mail any physical copies myself that's amazing so you're gonna have the, the pdf will be done campaign runs you're gonna be stressed out for the life of the campaign because it's gonna be all you're thinking about that yeah. and then and then when the campaign wraps up you send the files and the money to whoever's gonna print and fulfill i'm gonna send it to kablam then they're gonna print and fulfill it excellent and i'm excellent. done and, you know, if I might have 10 or 12 and I'm talking full total, not, you know, individual tiers, but just, you know, of, you know, some really good bonus uh, tiers or of material that I will have to send out. But it won't be, you know, we're not talking anything major. Um, like if I 3D print some, you know, the Star Marshals badges or something like that. That's great. Or maybe I'll just send them, you know the STL files and say, print your own damn badge, but here's, you know, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I can, I'm going to do like a junior star marshals, digital club kit where you, yeah, you get an ID card and you get a certificate and you get, you know, the oath or whatever. And, but it's all PDF printing yourself done. That's great. That's really great. Super yeah. smart. Um, I, cause like you said, uh, you know, it's, it's hard enough and I've, you know, I've struggled with this with other Kickstarters, where you know i'm like okay boom done you know it's done but i'm not finished with the project and then i've got those other muses you know pulling me in different directions too and it's it's hard for me to stay focused because i have the attention span of a gnat and but now i mean literally star marshals is just waiting waiting to launch i mean it's i love it i love it to go. and i've got my back i got my plan to where the less i'm involved in my project the better <laughs> simply put and so it's it's set to go that's awesome i'm so happy for you we talked i was talking with rick beach this week there was a i, I do another um i i, I co-host something else <clears throat> during the week that pencil to pencil podcast i think about you the whole time okay. the whole time I'm with them i'm thinking about me okay. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh we talked with rick beach this week he's a cartoonist and he he's very similar to that kind of approach where he puts it all on Kindle and Amazon. Print, people want digital copies, they get it from Amazon. People want the print-on-demand books, they get it from them. So it's like 
he doesn't have to touch a book. He uploads his files and he's done. He's like, he does, I, I get no sense that he misses going to the post office or, uh, you know, dealing with boxes of books and all that stuff. You know, sure, if someone wants a signed copy, they'll catch him at an event or maybe they'll buy one personally off the website. But this whole campaign, I love that you're doing it this way. I well, tell me, tell us about Zoop. Can you can you tell us about Zoop, how it differs from Kickstarter and why you'd go there? Um, well, they'll I they, they sent me this stuff to fill out, like, you know, like the worksheets to fill out, and of, uh, you know, describe it here. You know, here are the visual, you know assets here's you know the tiers and rewards and add-ons and whatever and then they'll put it on their website they'll manage the page they'll promote it you know i'll promote it as well too chris Faison will promote it you know you'll throw in hey check out my buddy dance you know thing i'm doing a cover you know that sort of thing so yeah i mean i'm still responsible for promoting it i just don't walk away is there an uh, updates page like uh, similar to um Kickstarter where you'll say, Hey, thanks for hey, we hit our goal or, yep. or is yep. that stuff? so yep. kind I of could, blog element? I could add stretch goals, but I don't think I'm gonna have stretch goals on this one. Right. Keep um, I mean uh, why put myself through that pressure? Here's the deal. I had a couple extra bucks. I paid Chris to do the art. I don't have talent to pay for. I paid the letterer to do the lettering. You know, I'm paying my four variant artist cover is a minimal you know price way i'm way under paying you for what your cover but you're getting a little you know you're getting a little scratch money and i'm done i don't i if this i could i could put this up for less than what i paid all of you guys to help me with the book because i've already paid for it and it's done and if i make the money back i'm okay you know this this book is not going to make or break me as far as making rent that is such a good approach. I love everything about that. Um, yeah, am I getting paid for all the hours I put into the, you know, I, hell, I wrote the script 20 years ago, to be honest with you, I think. So I've already, it's something that's just been sitting in a drawer. So I'm not going to get paid as the writer for it. I'm not going to get paid as the publisher for it. Probably I'm, you know, I'll still probably lose a couple hundred bucks maybe, but it's just, it's a project that's done. It's out there. And then it'll be available on Amazon after it, you know, the and Kickstarter. Next convention you do, you're gonna have copies of it. You get, you know, people who sign up for your Patreon. Your big, your big thing in 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 November, you're gonna do a special offer. Hey, sign up for Patreon and get a copy of the PDF of the book. Which yeah, at that point is just a bunch yes. Of so I doubt, you know, because like, you know, I'm, I've put maybe. I mean, at full disclosure here, maybe three grand into the production of it already. And if I just say, hey, let's make three grand, you right. know, and Zoop takes out their 10%. Okay, I'm out the 300 bucks there. And, you know. So Zoop is, so they take ten, they take roughly 10% the way Kickstarter does. Yeah. And, uh, but, but, but you went with Zoop because you're, haven't been thrilled with the Kickstarter experience or you just want to try something different or because well, they're, they're, focused? they're comic book focused. Right. And so I'm not, I'm not going to be uh, competing with other projects that aren't comic books. Right. Kickstarter, you're competing with everything. Sure. Kickstarter is never, ever going to give me a project we love type of thing. You know, they're just net. You know, I just, there's too much out there, you know. Whereas, whereas Zoop curates things. They're like, we're only going to do these few things. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, they were very, it was like a job interview getting accepted to Zoop. Just to be on there as a project they love. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so I'm impressed with that. And, you know, and I've seen, I've had friends that do, that have done books on Zoop and they've done real well, like uh, Jason Copeland's Full Tilt right now. Is kicking ass on Zoop. What is kicking ass? I I mean, he is kicking. He's doing well. Well, what is that? What is that? What does doing well mean? Like ten thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars, like fifty-eight grand, something like that, right now. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Um. No, so it's doing. I'm, I'm going to type it. Let's see. Let's. I'm going to look it up right now. Full tilt. Okay, thirty nine grand. 
That's great. And it was a ten thousand dollar. Is what he was set it for. And it's a beautiful black and white book, hardcover, you know, book that he's been working on for years. Um, and you know, I, and it just the the fact that it's just comic books, I think, is the number one reason I'm going with them. Um, because everything else is looks, you know, you can set it up just pretty much like a Kickstarter, but I'm not gonna get lost in the noise of Kickstarter. Right, right. Will That's I get cool. as much eyeballs on it? Probably not, but I'll probably get more the sound to noise ratio will probably be better with Zoop than with Kickstarter. Yeah, I mean, it seems like on Kickstarter that unless you're a project we love, you don't get the walk-in traffic. You don't get the people stumbling onto it as easily. No. The only thing they have is the, you know, when someone gets an update, when I back something on Kickstarter, because I have some people who follow me, not a lot, but the, the following system is like, Steve just back, your friend Steve, the person you're following just back this thing. Mm -hmm. That is their major secret sauce right now. Apart from the, the project we love, Magic, which, you know, in the gaming space, I don't see that, you know, it happens so infrequently. The comic space, it happens a little more often. I think there's, I think they're more generous with it. But gaming, I don't know what, I, you know, I don't think... There was a there was a recent million dollar Kickstarter, gaming Kickstarter, and it was not a project we loved. Like it wasn't like the community was excited for it. It looked amazing, but Kickstarter was like meh. And I think a lot of it, and I, and I, I don't know a better way to put this, but I think a lot of what Kickstarter does, their projects we love or their promotion, is kind of political. And I'm not saying that as like, oh they hate you know, middle aged cis white guys, but. They're like, you know, let's promote pride. So they, you know, they'll promote a pride game yeah. over, say, my, you know, just regular run of the mill D and D type of thing, or you know, something with a punch with it. Something, you know, look, this has cute anime animal characters in it. Everybody loves those. So let's, you know, we love this project right. type of things. So that makes sense. And I don't mean it. I'm not. I'm not saying, oh, that's not fair. You know, blah at all. No, I just I mean, say they I go with that. they I go with trends that. and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, if the idea is being that you want to have you want to promote things in a diverse way, that especially because the concept of all things being equal in an art form, it's hard to say what's equal to something else. You could say, so what's going to be the distinguishing factor here? This is this dragon's got feathers and this dragon's got you know fins. Like, which one is which one do you promote? And so I can see why something which would be. Uh, I don't know, things that tend to be organized around charities, things that be not because not they can't do charities on Kickstarter, but things that are organized around uh, nobler goals. Yes. I think if you can put a noble, if you if you attach, and, and then sometimes it seems, very, you, you've seen these in comics projects, hey, we're starting a new project which is attached to a noble goal. And it is, you know, it is not a great looking project, but it's attached to a noble goal. Yeah. So you want to support it, but. Yeah, we're going to celebrate this aspect of life that doesn't get enough recognition or yeah. deserves more recognition. So that might be a project we love as opposed to this is just a regular fun sci-fi buddy cop comic book. Right. That and has it's tough because the part is project project we love. Sure. It must be a personal decision by the editing editorial staff. It's like a staff pick at Barnes and Noble. It's not yeah. like that's handed down from on high, but the idea being that as indie creators, we have to rely on that project. We love for financial <laughs> existence it's yeah. like i want to i want to somehow separate the idea of nobility and putting food on the table and don't get me wrong these projects are great you know the, yeah, yeah. these no, noble no. causes I, I love them they're perfect i back plenty of them i follow a lot of them they're super fantastic but i'm like a mark twain approach i write just to entertain you know or because i you know yeah, it's not a knock on those other projects. It's just it says if that's the if that's what if that's what internally they they're choosing to promote in a certain kind of in a or tend to promote or at least from that perspective, it seems like that's what they want to promote. If that's the perspective of the person who's saying, okay, this seems the trend. I've and I've heard this at various sections of Kickstarters because uh, each one of their content areas is kind of a different silo with a different set of editorial teams. Mm -hmm. like the comics person judges this section. The games person judges that section. Um, but if it's a, 
uh, you know, if your stuff isn't trending in that way, if it's not trending, I mean, as people who did comics during the image era and whose art style was not hot, you know, that wasn't political. It was more like, well, that's what's hot right now. Yeah. Pouches. You know? Yeah. What's that? Pou no pouches. So it's a, people tend to make, oh, people will sometimes say political when I think they really mean what's trending right now. Yeah. And look at that. With the, most of the stuff that I create, like let's say if they read the PDF on their on their tablet when they take it to the bathroom and they get so engrossed in it that their legs fall asleep, <laughs> I'm happy. That's a good standard. I've done my job. Sure. I don't want you to go to bed at night thinking, hmm, yeah, the way those one aliens treated that other planet definitely see some social conscious, you know, dilemma and, you know, no, no, I don't, there's none of that. Just, just have fun with the, you know, and if yeah, you forget about cool. my book two days later, that's fine. You know, yeah, that's what, that's what Indiegogo goes for. Yeah. Um, just read my fun, just read my stuff for fun. And, you know, yeah, I like the, I like the, the fame of having a good, you know, someone saying, Oh, I like your stuff. You know, no, I'm not famous, but if somebody says, yeah, I read hero happy hour. That was really fun. I'm going to get this because it's pretty much the same book, except it's a sci-fi <laughs> cop story as opposed to superheroes. Right. The same artist, same writer. So, um, I'm not breaking new ground here and just, I'm doing what I like to do, make fun of tropes. And that's what star marshals is. Yeah, and this but I hear also here see it's all over the place because I see that on webtoons as well. People are like, well, if you don't draw like a manga, you don't draw like anime, then you're not gonna have a popular comic there. And it's like, no, that's not true. I draw something completely unlike that stuff, and I have a perfectly fine audience. You just have to be fine with the audience size you have and what you're what you're doing. And if you're gonna do something that's perfectly fine, and if you're gonna do something, and that's also also it. A lot of people in the gaming space, you see them. They fell in love with D and D first and second edition, and they produce something that looks like D and D first or second edition, and then it doesn't get a project we love thing, and then they're like, "Well, dude, you're doing something from forty five years ago, like so many other people. What what is any special sauce you can put on that?" And sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it's it's hey, we're we're gonna it's gonna be more inclusive in some way. At least the at least the lineup of creators is different, even if it ends up being exactly another version of OSR, right. you know. So I get why they, I get why, because I also think they get a flood of stuff. And also, I want to say this. I think Kickstarter should have a game tabletop and RPG should be separate categories. I think the idea that the TTRPG community is wrestling with the, uh, the, the board games. Making, what's that? The board games. The board games and, and video games. We're kind of all in the same silo. And it's like, come on. No, no, no. TTRPG, maybe TTRPG and board games can be separate for the video games or it, it just seems like we're all in the same, we're fighting for the same re, uh, shelf space. And I don't think we should be. No. And that's another reason why I've gone to Zoop with this. It's, I mean, like right now, Zoop has, let me see. They've got one, two, three, four, five, five active campaigns. That's great. You know, that's it. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, about you know, maybe thirteen or fifteen coming soon. Mm. You know, mine will be added to it soon. So, you know, I'm I, that's not a lot of shelf space I'm fighting for there. Right. And that's every project is I'm looking at this, they are diverse projects. I mean, style-wise and stuff like that. That's so. It's good. It's all and all comics is a, is a is a great place to be. Have yeah. you been looking at any of the gaming kickstarters that are going on now? We got we got Tales of the Valiant. We got Nave Volume Two. I haven't looked at Nave, but I did back Tales of the Valiant day one. Did you? No, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Um, because like I said, I want to do it. A, a, you know, a project that's focused uses Tales of the Valiant. I want to be one of the first with my urban setting for that big huge map where I showed off. Of you know in a previous episode um so yeah I've, i'm already i'm full i'm full on on that one um i have slowed down on my kickstarter backing um but you know that right now i'm waiting on just a whole bunch of stuff to show up hmm. yeah I'm, I'm excited for that uh and i, I was going to ask because 
that was going to be your you were going to be an early adopter of Tales of the Valiant. Yeah. So um, I plan on using, you know, my Warren hold map, that city. And I'm just going to create it's going to be like my free port. You know that Green Ronin did way back in the day. I'm just going to concentrate on that. I'm see. I'm trying to rein rein some of my muses in. Say, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're just going to work on this here. Just slow it down, cool your jets, pump the brakes, try to set up some uh, try to set up some boundaries for my creativity, so to speak. That's great. That's great. So, and, and what are the rules for creating content for their system yet? Do you know? I haven't looked that far into it. Um, you know, I've signed up for all of the, you know, info and all that. I'm on their discord and stuff like that. Again, when you're got, you know, 1800 projects going, you know, <laughs> it's hard to, you know, so, but I, that's why I'm, you know, okay. Thursday night show is done. I don't have another show until uh, June 28th in knoxville so i don't need to worry about catacombs and comedian show until june 27th <laughs> that's, great. that's great so i'm gonna spend the next couple of weeks getting that you know getting that ready for you know warren hold ready for tells of the valley uh i i want to make sure i've got some because i i showed you that you know dice bag that i have that i'm going to have out of gen con promoting yes. catacombs and comedians that's awesome i want to try to figure out a couple other things like you know, do I put the flag and the dragon sticker in there? Um, or a catacombs of comedian sticker? You know, I can't find a cheap way to make custom dice, so that's just not happening. I'm going to put a, you know, a QR business code in there that directs people to my catacombs of comedians material on Drive Through RPG. Um, so I'm just, you know, I'm going to have put put you know fill the pouch with a couple little things, and you know, I want to get that. You're not going to Gen Con, are you? No, no. And I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, uh, Game Hall. Game Hall. They, they have not gotten back to me. I, I wrote them and they, they kind of said, oh, yeah, yeah. And then I wrote them and then nothing. And then they sent out a press release about something. I wrote them again. Ah, yeah, yeah, and then nothing. So I, I might not I might not rate. I mean, clearly, I've only got one tiny zine out. I'm hardly. Well, to be honest, I've talked to them and says, yeah, you, we're going to do your show, but I haven't heard from them either. Mm -hmm. So I have no idea. I think they're I and I'm not knocking them. I just you know they're in the planning stages and yeah. And I've been I've been there. You know I've, I've helped run some events. I know how bare bones the staffs are. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try again this week after the holiday and see if uh, uh, they have any spot for me because I also offered to sponsor something. I thought okay let's let's sweeten the deal a little bit because their their artist tables were pretty inexpensive compared to comic conventions. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know it's. The price of the table is nothing compared to the flight and the hotel and all the other assorted stuff. So the money I would have spent at a table at a convention, again, I don't pay to go to a lot of conventions, but the amount I spent on that, I would put on toward advertising. Sure, I'll put, you need someone to sponsor a snack table or a uh, green room or something dumb, you know, that yeah. no one's going to know about. Yeah, man. No, I should think about doing that too. Sweeten the deal. Um but no, I'm looking forward to. I mean, that'll be the first. You're official. the entertainment. You're the entertainment. You know, I don't think. No, I don't think you need to sweeten the deal. Well, we'll see. Yeah, I'm gonna. You know, I, I'm th hoping that tomorrow being a holiday is when I can catch up on a lot of these administrative duties that I've been slacking on, like, you know, getting my ducks in a row for Warren Hole, getting my ducks in a row for Game Hole Con, getting my ducks in a row for this or that. Um, but yeah, Game Hole Con was a big concern because it was like the week before. Four or the week no the week after I found out that I didn't know when when or if I was going to go to London for the Titans game and right. but now I've decided I'm not going to do that because that's just too much money to go out there so I'm going to go down to New Orleans instead for a football game for a lot cheaper and but now yeah but I got to get that all worked out and everything so but yeah I mean the hardest part about being an artist is being an administrator right right <laughs> Well, that's what I love. That's what I love about what you're doing with uh, uh, the new Zoop project. And I, I, again, we'll talk with Rick this week. The idea of did the artwork, send it off, lean back. Let's work on the next page. Let's work on the next project. Let's get the, because that's the fun part. And, you know, the part where I'm going to be wrestling with my printers for the cards and for the books and for all that stuff is so much more work 
and people don't recognize how much work it is to, to set up. A, even you can build the InDesign fi file. Okay, great. And then you got a, a low res proof that that you can send to every or that you can have reviewers look at, and then a low res version that everybody sees. But then you have to do the print quality one, and you have to match their specs perfectly. And if you're off by a fraction of a, of a fraction, you get rejected. And it's like you know you're just wrestling systems all day long. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. I wish I. I wish I wasn't, and I'm not saying that I'm a great creative person, but I wish I wasn't a creative mind and just an absorber and just absorb creativity and just, so I could just curl up and read a book this weekend and not worry. And let's let other people create and not me, but oh, I'm cursed. <laughs> I don't have time to enter, to enjoy other people's creations because I've got these, you know, Temple the Dog Muses kicking in you know the backstage door trying to get out on on stage in front of an audience when you do relax if you did if you if, okay or maybe hypothetically if you did relax what has that looked like in, in the past or what might that look like in the future what is that is there do you sit down with a is it a book is it you get away from wi-fi you're like okay let's go get a hotel for one night in the country and get away from everything, uh, turn, leave our phones behind and all that? Or what do you do? I take a nap on the couch. Nice. <laughs> so you're, you're at that point, you're in shutdown mode and then you wake back up and you're back in creative mode. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, here's my fear. If I shut down, when, if I, if I relax, that means I'll think of something else to do. <laughs> Honestly. I'm not, that's not bullshit. That is, if I, if I step away from projects that I'm working on, that means, oh, if, if you got time to lean, you got time to clean sort of thing. And sure. if, if I got time to, to not work on something, that must mean I have time to add another project. It's probably, it's a little late in the episode to bring this up. Maybe it's a topic for a whole episode, but why do you create? It's fun. That's good. It's That's the good. best way to best way that I entertain myself. That's honestly, right. you don't play video games. I do play. I play. I'll play one game. And like right now, I play this game called Project Zomboid, which I love. It's a great game. It's on Steam. Check it out. It's amazing. It's 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 got a killer learning curve. You die all the time. I mean, it starts off with say, and it says, "This is how you die," but you can go in there and change stuff in the sandbox and make it easier and stuff like that. But it's. it's it's a it's a crafting role playing type game in a 1990s post apocalyptic. Is it a PC thing? Is it a platform thing? It's a PC. It's on Steam. Um, but yeah, I, I spend too much time doing that. But you know, but again, I mean, if it, it, it's 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 when I reset. Um, now that I have a seven year old daughter, she takes <laughs> up a lot of time. Uh, we bought her a Chromebook for graduating first grade. So we're going to get her YouTube channel set up and ready. She wants to be a YouTube. That's great. YouTuber this summer. Um, I'm getting a new puppy in a month, so I'll have that. Right. Yeah. So, you know, and there's still the day job. I mean, I'm not, I've got a day job Monday through Friday, nine to five. And how do you leave, <clears throat> how do you leave that work? Do you feel exhausted? Do you feel, I, I knew some, I had some friends who, oh, I think about this all the time. A friend of mine who's an accomplished writer, I would say an award-winning writer, and it involved wrote fiction, uh, genre fiction for anthologies, and um, had a day job where they were working on educational projects. And they left their job, and they were like, it was just, you know, they were spent, you know. And so the other stuff kind of fell by the wayside. I mean, maybe they scratched that itch and they were done with it, but the creative itch. But um, to me, it felt like as soon as they got into that more um, demanding, intellectually demanding job, their creativity, their, their energy was sapped and their creativity was sapped. Do you leave work charged or are you, um, drained? I have a very <clears throat> basic job. It's not hard at all. It's, um, and I love the people I work with. There's, you know, great. My new best friend, who I have when since moving out here to Tennessee, he works there. I met him there. He's into the same stuff that I am. So I at work, I bounce a lot of my D and D ideas off of him. That's fun. 
are my, you know, story ideas or my comic ideas. He's into the same stuff that I am. He's, you know, considerably younger than I am, but he's, you know, we get along great. I mean, we're like two peas in a pod. My job is not mentally taxing at all. That's great. I'm on my feet the entire time. Mm. Um, so I'm which is, which is as a creator, that's probably pretty good. You don't yeah. get a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. So I might be a little achy at the end of the week. Um, Fridays, I tend to crash early mm. after my Friday night, my every other Friday night D and D game. Um, but for the most part. I've because I've had jobs before that you know didn't do that, but now I, I mean I'm 55. I'm I'm kind I kind of consider myself semi-retired. And the fact and I've told they tried to promote me at this job. Here, Dan, here's a set of keys. Here, you want this and this? I'm like, no. no. <laughs> nope. Right. Get away. Get away. Nope. Uh -huh. Well, Dan, you know how to do this better than anybody else. I'm tough. I'm not doing it. Good for you. If you want, you know, hire somebody. Else. So they hire kids less than half my age and who are getting promoted. And they're like, what's about that old guy? And he goes, well, we asked him, he doesn't want it. So <laughs> that's awesome. But so it pay, it's, it's my health insurance. Mm. You know, I get health insurance. I get, you know, beer money. It's if I have that job, it's not going to make or break if I make rent. So that's, you know, it's, I kick a little money into the household fund and I kick a little money to pay for all the shit you see behind me. <laughs> um, That's awesome. And, uh, you know, to create catacombs of comedians, because I'm not making enough money off catacombs of comedians for it to pay for itself. So yet, yet, yet. So someday, hopefully. Um, well, I'll tell you, but while speaking of actual play, are you a critical role fan? Do you watch critical role? I watched one season and it was great. Have you did you hear anything or see anything about Candela Obscura this week? I know it came out. They did their first episode, and it's not it's not a game system. It's based on a game system. I'm not really kind of. It's more story, yeah, teller driven than you know, yeah, than I, the D and D. But I had just finished playing a four session game of Blades in the Dark. Mm -hmm. so brand new to the game. Really, it's a weird game. Um, yeah, I've got it over there. Never played it, but I've got it. So yeah, it's so the concept being that you you basically start, okay, the heist is beginning. Here's what we know about it. And like, okay, you basically got to fumble your way through it using flashbacks. And you have things in your bag. Okay, I'm going to break out the stake that I happen to bring. You don't planning it. You know, you're sort of on the fly countering the problems uh, through improv. You're basically improving your way through it. Way more RP than G. Although the G part is really interesting in terms of the characters don't have, they tend not to have long-term goals. I think every character in this world, in the Blades in the Dark is sort of like, you're going to die any minute now. Um, and you have that kind of go for broke attitude with everything. There's none of the, there's never this, let's hold back and give it a week's time. It's like, no, we have to do it right now because if you don't do it now, you're dead. There's a gun to your head throughout the entire story, basically. It felt like, I watched a bit of I first I watched the description of the new Candela Obscura game and I'm like, this is Blades in the Dark. I've I mean, heard that, yeah. Almost identical. The character sheets look flipped, but other than that, it was seemed very very similar to the point where I thought, this feels weird and bad. Like someone's gonna see this and not know that they that another thing ex has existed for a very long time and is exactly this. Because people who just watch Critical Role, I'm going to assume most of them don't have like deep RPG knowledge. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm drop outside. Um, um, they don't have deep RPG knowledge. So they're going to see this and just, oh, look, look at this thing that Critical Role invented. Um, and that feels really weird to me. Um, I was uncomfortable with it. Because again, I was just playing it and they're describing it. And here's how the system works. And I'm like, yeah, I know. It's like, here's our game. We're calling it. It's it's basically checkers. Here's what the here's here's what the rules are. I'm like, this is sketchy. And then they went back and said, oh, not went back. <laughs> that feels very much like plays in the dark. Um, flashback. Uh, they said that the f the full book of Kindle Obscure is going to include references. Hey, we you know this is inspired by Blaze in the Dark and give a shout out to all those people. But I don't think any of that was in this quick start guide you could download. So if it exists in the full size version the full version of when it's finally available um 
that'll be nice, but it still feels pretty sketch right now. Like, ooh, you know, I'm not, I, I might chalk that up to, you remember, are you old enough to remember that summer where all the meteor movies came out? Yeah. Yeah. Are, or, 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 or the, the only animated fish movies and animated are, bug are movies. The, are the summer that all the submarine movies came out? Uh-huh. I mean, yeah, Blades in the Dark has been out for a while. But, you know, there's ideas that I'm probably using for 4D20, which I've never read in any other game, but somebody else has probably come up with that system. This is just, the genre is the same. The, <laughs> this is like, this is, this, this, here's what, to me, as I was telling my friend, uh, uh, and I'm a big, I'm a, I would count myself a critter. I'm a huge fan of Critical Role. But I also recognize how much power they have. The idea that they, they're going to, their system, they'll probably leave Dungeons and Dragons and play their own. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking more forward to that other new system than this one. So they have a, they have a ton of power. And so I'm curious, you know, I worry about how they use it. And um, they, so whoever, as long as the, if the creator who plays in the dark doesn't have a problem with it, and I haven't heard them weigh in on it. If they don't have a problem with it, then I don't have a problem with it. So I, I kind of, that's where it was. Linda Codega wrote up a, a bit on um, Candela Obscure and it's, you know, it's start. Again, it's it's tough because steampunk and horror steampunk and metaphysical steampunk with supernatural elements, all that stuff, way more niche than fantasy. So they're having a, it's gonna narrow their audience a bit compared to, as, as, as talented as those performers are, it's not the same as, you know. No, I mean, that genre is playing for a, a cosplay crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, a lot of critters are a cosplay crowd, you know. They're the, I, I mean, I, come, come on, Steve. They're the, I mean, yes, I'm not, I don't mean this in a horrible way or anything. And I, I, I feel horrible for saying that because I've said it a couple times this episode. <laughs> um, Go on. But they're one of the things we hate about. You remember when comic book conventions were comic book conventions back in the day? I don't have that attitude. I don't. I don't know. I don't buy that. I don't buy that. That's that's old man talk, man. Come on, music I mean, today sucks, right? No. It, well, yeah. I think it's better now. It's music, better now. Music today does suck, but it's better now. All the music we had in the past is still there. None of it's been taken away. This is no, none of the new music. All it has is added to it. And yeah. See, can, I don't want to sound like an old grognar, but you know, how hard, how much harder is it for you to sell a comic book at a comic con nowadays compared to the person selling the goggles on the top hat uh, in the booth next to you? That presume, but okay. The show has, the show has, let's pick a show. I'm playing it's devil's it. advocate here. It, you know, it's fine. I love this. So, but San Diego is a is hundred times bigger than it was. The number of comic fans hasn't changed. It's just as hard. You're making just as much money. You have to walk past more booths. So, is it harder it, for them to find you though? Uh, no, no. I will. I don't go for that either because comic fans have always been hunter gatherers. We've never been. It's never been easy to find that one nook shop that had the books. That's hidden under the railroad track. Literally in my town growing up, there was the railroad, and in the shadow of the trestle is the the slenderest comic shop of all time. And you had a, it, it basically looked like no, no parents gonna let their kid in there. But you don't feel slightly slighted in the least that when you go to I let's just say any town USA Comic Con and they promote the six wrestlers and 14 cosplayers. And no mention of the comic creators, and they call it a comic con. I, you know, the com yeah, com comic con doesn't have that meaning. It doesn't mean it means pop culture thing now. So I don't mind that that's translated in that way. But uh, but, but there are comic conventions. There are pure comic conventions like you know Baltimore Heroes Con, SPX, uh, uh, Ape WonderCon. WonderCon's more focused a little bit that way. Oh, uh, I miss TCAF. Ape. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So TCAF. Um, there are these events which have a comics, purely comic centric focus, which is great. But when there's a there's a Savannah Comic Con that I went to in the fall of last year, apparently they had a name problem. There's, enough, there's already a Savannah Comic Con, so they're going to call it something else. And both of those events have they don't have any mention of comic guests yet. They just talk about one's got Riker, and the other one's got like Jake the Snake Roberts. So it's like they're both Comic Cons. But to me, I love those events. If I go there and there isn't you know, 
Jim Lee siphoning all the money out of the room, or I'll go there, I'll clean up. I'm happy to be. That makes sense. Yeah. So I don't know. I I I don't know. There's a certain like I, I think of feeling that some people say that like they feel like they hit every red light and it's just you just remember the red lights. I feel like at comic conventions, a lot of us think of like I, I'm more upset when I go to comic conventions of the print walls. I hate that print on demand has made bootlegging so easy. I'm it's way more, you know, uh, when I'm set up at a table at Comic Con and all the artwork is AI generated and all the books are chat GPT written, I'll be more upset about that than I am about someone who's selling swords. Um, the fact that they, the fact that there's a woman who makes dice and she's amazing, but she brings her she brings us like like a what used to be like the huge retail size jugs that would hold mayonnaise like it's a five gallon drum mm -hmm. or a and just full of d20s and she sets on the table she's going to make ten thousand dollars that weekend. I'm not going to make that. I'm not going to. I have I'm carrying I'm lugging these books and they're huge and they weigh a ton. I put them on the table and I have to hand sell one at a time following someone comes up dice give me here's my card it's like no i i get there's tons of reasons for me to feel uh like i've chosen the wrong profession but i don't mind that the shows have gotten bigger well next week is the nashville comic-con <clears throat> are you going i i tried to get in but i was denied <laughs> the hell because I'm not a voice actor. And most of the people are there are voice actors. I'm well, not because I'm not a voice actor, but it's put on by the guy running it as a voice actor, and he's got a lot of voice actor people there. And but he calls it a Comic Con? It's Nashville Comic Con. Look it up. Um and you know, there's a lot of wrestlers and a lot of voice actors, and there's some comic book people who are gonna be there, but trying to buy an artist alley table, or were you trying to come in as a guest? I was trying to buy buy an artist Alice artist Alice. Oh, oh, yeah, because I wanted to I wanted to introduce the world to Star Marshals, right? You know, like have you know I was going to do a Nashville Comic Con exclusive cover and you know do it before the actual campaign launch, and I put in my app months and months ago. And I didn't hear anything after a couple of weeks. And I said, just how long does it take to find out if we've got, oh, we're completely booked. But if something comes up, you'll hear from us. Wow. I'm like, well, you could at least told me I wasn't in, you know, yeah. that's, that's kind of like what I'm expecting to hear from game hall con. Um, but, but it's at the awesome. Nashville fairgrounds, I think. And I'm going to go just to check it out. Take Gene Louise. Um, maybe I'll go. If I go Saturday, I'll report it next Sunday to you. If I go, after we talk next Sunday or if we miss next Sunday, because I'm going, you'll, we'll talk about it the week after, but I do plan to go check it out. You know, I think, I'm, okay. I think it's 35 bucks at the door too. And it's, you know, it's not a cheap thing. 35 bucks. Is there any comic guests that you're familiar with there? I'm going to bring it up. Well, here's the thing. Their only website is their Facebook page. <sighs> yeah. There should have been a, there should have been a, uh, there should be a threshold requirement before you call yourself a comic-con it's, it's nashville comic-con spelled c-o-m-i-c-o-n um let me you know they i think they did a one i think it's relatively new they did one before the uh okay nope they've got a website now um Chuck Norris is going to be there. <laughs> I love his comics. Jonathan Glapian, who does com Batman comics. Okay. Pa uh, Butch Patrick. I love his comics. Eddie Munsters. Sure, sure. Sergeant Slaughter. Oy. Oh, Craig Rosu is going to be there. Interesting. He's uh, not local. He's, he's in the Northeast. G.I. Joe Cobra, Middle Tennessee, whatever. So, yeah. Here. Arthur Sudium canceled, so no zombies. Take his table. It's so, yeah, that's special guest. And that's um, the, the fairground. So, they probably don't have panels. For the weekend, it's 75 bucks. 
That's a VIP badge. Okay, so Saturday, Sunday pass will cost me $17.50 at the door. Or maybe I got a pre-order. I don't know. So that's not that. That's not horrible. Not to see Butch Patrick. With the two dollars, yeah. Hey, I'd, hey, I just want to know if you, can you can you introduce me to Rob Zombie? <laughs> but yeah, a lot of video game voice guys and comic book and cartoon animated voice guys. The wrestler Tugboat. So there you go. So I'll check it out. See how it is. Um, I, f- I figure it'd be a fun thing for Gene Louise at the yeah, least. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. Sure. And who knows? You'll you'll get another tchotchke to put up on your shelf. And yeah, there's a huge one in, in the area too, the ICC show or something like that, which is a huge collector show. Mm. And but that's like 45 bucks to get in, I think. And it, I mean, it's like bigger than Comic Con, but just by um vendors i think wow it doesn't have all the pop and circumstance and panels and all that sort of stuff wow it's Just like a collect- collector show paying admission to go buy stuff for yeah like a three-day a three-day mall yeah cool. let me see icc nashville real quick yeah today's the last day to buy tickets on site because today's the 28th right iccc it is the 28th oh my goodness and tickets for today, they don't say, but, oh, well, $45. And they have celebrity guests. They've got John Rice Davies, Deborah Ann Wool, Vincent De- De Norfolk. Charlie Cox, Ian McDermott. At ICC? Yeah. So they got the cast of Daredevil? Yeah. Deborah Ann Wall, you need to connect with her. You guys, you're, you're D&D nerds. Give, she needs to get a dice bag. <laughs> they got Samantha Nurk, who does Voices Gem. Femi Taylor, who played, you remember the Green, green Twi'lek in Return of the Jedi? Dancing for Jabba. Okay, sure. So these are a lot of, a lot of people at this show to sign your action figures. Ah, I see, I see. That's something. Yeah, I mean, this looks like I like shopping more. That's my favorite thing at a convention, anyway. I mean, obviously. <laughs> but uh, Freddie Prince Jr. So. But I wasn't on the ball. I said, "Oh, I got to talk to Steve instead of go to that instead of paying forty five bucks to." Is that to, that's today? You can still do that's, that. That's this weekend. No, I don't. I got to mow the lawn <laughs> and prepare for Fra- the, the 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 arrival of Fra- of Fraley and the. Yeah, exactly. I got to clean my garage and three D printer of joy. Yeah, so I can become a miniatures D and D player. That's what's going to happen. I'm just going to do miniature. No more theater of the mind. We're using miniatures from here on out. Shelf behind you is going to be covered with minis. Yeah, no, I'm not painting them. Nope. Nope. I don't have I don't have the skill, the talent, or the patience, or the time. So that's it. I think we covered everything this morning, right? I think we did. We got Tales of the Valiant. We got uh, Candela Obscura. We got when. Uh, where can people sign up to get the uh, to 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 line up to pre-order? Uh, you can go to StarMarshals.com right now. And it has a link to sign up for the newsletter. And then when it comes out, you'll find out there. But then starmarshals.com will eventually switch over to the Zoop site. Awesome. But yeah, it's um, you have to paint them. There's a difference in table ready and show ready. No, no. Okay, you're going to paint them too for me? I don't think so. (laughs) And it won't be, I won't use miniatures at the show. That's still theater of the mind. Right, right. Catacombs can mean theater of the mind. Everyone's, everyone's, yeah. What's he doing over there? How come he doesn't have? I'm sure that's, you do. That's not line of sight. Yeah, <laughs> get out and I've got to set up a camera and have monitors behind me. And then, <laughs> but we uh did, we did show the the uh, little uh, flag and the dragon video at the beginning of the show last time. So nice. So yeah, it's all thing. Um, 
we'll t- we'll discuss it Wednesday, really. <laughs> I don't have to, my chat, my, my, my computer's been acting wonky. So my chat went away. <laughs> I assume you're getting grief from Fraley. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, we'll probably run run your miniatures as a test. Sweet. On Wednesday. Sweet. Um, I don't know how it, he's in charge. I'm just going to say, okay, now show me what button to press. <laughs> I have no okay. Um, yeah, we've, uh, we've done more than our hour. So, um, what are you doing next, Steve? What are what are you? You still you're, by the next time we talk? Uh, you're the, still getting your book out, right? Yep, yep, yep. The death dealing will be the PDF. Uh, at least the beta should be in everybody's hands. Fingers crossed. Add a question mark to everything I'm saying. And so, then I might have a convention to complain about next time. Sweet, sounds good. And uh, and hopefully we'll know what the the, the official pre sign up for Zoop will be up and running by next weekend. That's awesome. And um, yeah, and I can show off some of the covers that I've gotten or getting. No hint, no pressure, Steve. None at all. <laughs> None at all. Um, seriously. Um, okay. I've been I've drawing talked- the whole time we've been talking. I'm sure you have. All right, Steve, I will talk to you next Sunday. All right, Dan. Have a great uh, week. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And may you make all of your saving throws.